Good day! I am Dr. Wilfredo S. Tagle, urologist, and welcome to Medical Proc Tips, a series of tips and tricks that helps you jumpstart your medical practice. For today's episode, we will be talking about selecting the right educational grant. So there are three factors in looking for educational grants. The first factor is institution. This is the place or the organization where you will do the grant or the specific research or the continuing medical education that you're going to perform. Number two, is the person or the organization. The person is the one who will do the research. Or if it is a group of person, it's within the organization, it is the organization will be the one responsible to perform that particular research or grant. And number three, of course, you have to have beneficiaries. This is the person or group of persons that would benefit the result of your study, research, or the purpose of your continuing medical education. Okay? Then, how do you look for the right educational grant or funding. Number one, you can look from within your community. There are a lot of funding individuals or organizations that would like to fund your research within the community. For example, the social, uh, social, civic, organizations like Rotary, Lions, and other organizations. Number two, from your peers, from your friends, from your uh, KKK, Kapitbahay, Kamag-ana, or Kaibigan. Number three, from national government agencies. There are a lot of grants that are given from the government agencies like the Department of Health, the National Science Development, the World Health Organization, the Office of the President, the Congress. So there are a lot of government agencies. And number four, from local and international websites. There are a lot of websites that are looking for good and promising research that are willing to be, to give grants and support to that kind of research, especially if they would jive to their objectives of their organization or their corporations. Then, number five, from medical organizations. Of course, there are a lot of bigger organizations that would support grants for CME and research, like the Philippine Medical Association or the World Medical Organizations. Okay, so there are a lot of funding agencies. You just have to look for it and the one that would jive with your type of research or continuing medical education project. Then, the next question is how to select the right educational grant 
who would give you the right funding. Of course, number one, look for agencies who are supporting your CME program of choice. For example, those agencies that are supporting the research for prostate cancer. Or there are agencies who are supporting ADHD problems. So they are the much for supporting your CME program. Number two, you match your area of practice to a specific CME program. If you are practicing in a particular endemic area, of course, you match your CME to that particular area. For example, if you are living in a temperate area near the in an island, of course, you look for a CME, for example, that takes care of stone problems, urinary stone problems. Okay? If you are uh, living in a highlands area, you look for CME that are looking for, that takes care about thyroid problems. So that's it for matching your area of practice to your specific CME program. And lastly, number three, choose the appropriate time to join your CME program of choice. For example, if your CME program of choice is about circumcision, of course, the appropriate time would be during summer. If your area of choice is about cough and colds, it should be during rainy season. So, I think that's all for today. Please like, follow, and share. Subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube page to catch the latest episode of Medical Practice every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please share this episode of Medical Practice so we can help more young aspiring doctors build their medical practice and better serve their patients. Okay, see you and bye-bye.